You know, WordPress is amazing and it is very, very powerful. But the problem is there are situations where you may want WordPress here to connect to a totally different service. For example, maybe you're running a blog, but you want that when someone subscribe on your blog, they get added onto system.io or Brevo or MailerLite or any of those services. Because of course, WordPress is not an email marketing platform. So in those situations, you are really, really stuck. But thankfully, we have BitFlows. Now, BitFlows here is fantastic because you can connect a form and this will pass data to either MailerLite or even Brevo, depending on how you've configured your workflow or rather your flow. So in this video, we're going to be doing a review of BitFlows and also how to set up a quick automation and connection. All right, so over here, you can see we have a basic uh, connection. So we're just gonna go back. So first of all, in order for you to make this setup work, you need to install two plugins. In my case, I've installed the pro version of BitFlows. And you can find it over here. We're gonna get, head over to plugins so I can show you where it is. So if I click on installed, you can see all my installed plugins and I've already gone ahead and installed BitFlows here and BitFlows Pro. Now, once you install it, you're going to get an entry over here on the left, okay? So you click here and this now takes you onto the actual dashboard. So this is where you can get to see all the, um, executions that have happened. So let's say um, whatever connection has worked, let's say 50 times, that will show on this graph over here. Brilliant. Okay. The next item here is the actual flow. So these are the actual workflows. I mean, we are going to come back to this one in a moment where I get to show you how to create one from scratch. Next, you have your connections here. So whatever you've connected to, it will be listed here. So I was playing around with system.io, so you can see I've connected it over here. If you wanna delete it, you can just come over here, click on delete and say yes, and then your connection is totally gone. Next, we also have webhooks. Now, there are going to be situations where on this list of services, you may find that there is a service that's not on the list. At first, when I started using this, I really panicked because I was saying to myself, well, if this plugin is not there and this plugin is not there, then this thing is pretty much useless. But you have the opportunity to add webhooks. Okay, next you also have custom apps. You can create your own custom app over here. You can see I have one I created here called my app and you can set it up to trigger whatever you want in case you want a specific uh, workflow that you want to set up. You also have settings here. So this is where you uh, get your notifications. If you if something fails, you can add your email address here and this will notify you when something fails. So pretty much that's about it. So as you can see, it is a system that is very, very easy to set up. It's not overwhelming and it's very, very uh, easy to set up as a beginner. All right, so let's head over now to flows. So this is where we need to create a, um, a flow. So our scenario in this, in this case is I want to create a form on my website. And once I, uh, someone you know, fills in that form, I want them to be added onto system.io, okay? Because that's the uh, email management system that I'll be using, okay, for this example. Why did I choose this? I wanted something that was totally different and not connected at all. I could have used Fluent CRM for this because it is a WordPress plugin, but then again, it doesn't make sense because that connection is already there between Fluent Forms and Fluent CRM. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click here on Create Flow. Now, in this example, I've already gone ahead and created a basic form using uh, Fluent Forms, okay? So this is just a basic form with a name and email address entry. All right, so with that now, we are going to give this flow a name. So I'm just gonna call this BitFlow like that. And I'm gonna click here on blank and then click on Create. Now, it's time to select our app. Now look at this interface. Can you see how elegant and very minimal it is? I mean, I really like how simple this is. I can drag things around here, move things around. I mean, it's just really cool. If I want to zoom in, I can zoom in like that, or I can zoom out or I can fill in the screen like that, okay? But let's just keep things very simple here. I'm just gonna drag it over here. Okay, great. We also have these three little dots here on the top. When you click that, it gives you your flow settings. 
and you can actually export this. So this is where, let's say, you are a design agency and you'd like to share this flow with um, with someone else or you want to use similar flows on other websites. This is where you can just export it and then import it on a different website. I really, really like this feature, by the way. It's really cool. Okay, and oh, here we also have our logs. So this can show you how this flow is actually working and performing. All right, great. So with that now, we're going to start with our form. So you click over here and then you can search for Fluent Forms. So there we go. So we have Fluent Forms. So you can see here we have a few Fluent services. We have Booking. We also have SMTP and Fluent CRM. Anyway, we're here for Fluent Forms. Right. So with that now, I am going to set this as a trigger. Okay. With that set, I need to choose my form. And I'm just going to refresh this list here just to make sure that my form will be showing. And my form is called Flow Form. Okay, that's what I named it. So this stage now is a stage which is very, very important because we need to capture this data to make sure that everything is working fine so that when other users start ent entering their information, then there shouldn't be any problems. So the very first thing you want to do here is to click on Listen response okay let's go ahead and do that now we're just going to come over to this uh, new tab enter our name and email address so we're going to say mac at creative astro.com okay but it can be any name by the way it doesn't have to be you know my actual email because this is just for capturing data okay so now that i've done that i'm going to come back over here to this tab and you can see here that something has happened, okay? So you can see response captured. So it means everything here worked. So all I have to do now is to close this. Okay, great. So what's the next step? Well, we are now going to click on this plus button. And we're now going to select our action, okay? So our action is to add our user onto system.io. So on system.io, what you want to do is to come over here to your, your image here. Click on settings because what we need here is the API key. So we're going to come over here to public API keys. Click on that. And then we want to create our API key over here. So this API key is going to allow us to connect with Fluent Forms so that information can be passed between the two. All right. So let's call this... Um, Bitflow API, like that. Next, we are going to go in and add in the expiration date, but you don't have to, okay? I'm just doing this because obviously you're going to see my API key. Next, I'm going to click on apply, click on save, and now my API key has been created and you can see it over here. I'm going to copy that. But at any point, if you don't need this anymore, you can just come on these three little dots here and delete it, okay? So anyway, I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to come over here now. Click on this plus button and we're going to search for system.io. There we go. I'm going to select it. And this time this is an action. So I'm going to click over here. Great. So now it's saying choose a connection. So right now we don't have a connection set. So we have to create a brand new connection by clicking over here where it says add connection. Okay, so you can see here our default is API key. There's no other uh, connection that we can create here. So I'm going to go ahead now and add my value and then click on connect. So this should connect us to system.io and yes, it has. Next, we are now going to choose a tag. Now over here, if you haven't created a tag, it's very important you create a tag. So if we go to CRM, we have a list of tags here and creating a tag is very easy. You can just click here on create tag and then we can just call it uh, Bitflow. Okay, Bitflow user, maybe. Okay, and then we're gonna say save. All right, so we want that when someone fills in that form, they get added over here. So I'm just gonna refresh this just to make sure that my tag is, is, is on there. 
I'm going to click on this drop down and we can see it's the first one, Ble uh, Bitfo <laughs> Bitflow user. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, there we go. So now I have to map my values. Okay, so we have email here. So over here, we need to now look for our email field. So we're going to go to form. Or form data, maybe. Okay, there we go. So the email is what we need. I'm going to select that. And we can do a test run if you want to. But anyway, uh, it's all there. I'm going to hit close. So now when someone or a user fills in this form, all that information now is going to be added onto system.io and it is going to show over here on the contacts. Now, I don't want to show you the contacts because there's a list of users there that actually have their email addresses. Now, this actually works because as you can see here, I have my sales funnels and this is actually being, uh, you know, making some money, okay? Anyways, so now that we have that all set, we can now come over here, go to our flow settings if we need to. If any node fails, and then, I mean, there's a few things here on the settings. So if any node fails, continue execution or block execution. So this is something that you can set up for this particular flow. Okay. So you can test the flow here if you want to, but I'm going to go back. And here it is. It's called bit flow. All right. So as you can see, it was very, very easy to set up and you can set up multiple of these for my service that I chose with BitFlows, with the BitFlows Pro, you can have unlimited flows here. So you can have all sorts of things working, but you have to remember that this is working on your current website, connecting to a different service. And over here, when it comes to the services, there's a long list. I mean, oops, let's head over to an existing one. Yes. So over here, you can see there's a long list. There's one, two, three, form builder, API request. You know, there's Academy LMS. Now, what I'd like to see here, maybe I'm just being petty. Oops. We have cut flows. We have Claude. So we have some of these AI stuff. This is amazing. Do we have Gemini? Yes, we do have Gemini. This is really cool. Okay. So as you can see, we have quite a lot here. We have Learn Dash. So if you're using, say, let's say, for example, Learn Dash, and you'd like to uh, perhaps maybe send your data somewhere else, I mean, there's a lot here that we can choose from. Look at this. I mean, this is a massive, 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 massive list. We have OpenAI as well. We have Paymatic. Wow, look at that. Quill Forms, Celsi. We have Slack, Spectra. Squarespace, we have Shortcut, Short Forms. I mean, just look at this. I mean, this list is, it's crazy. <laughs> we have WP Funnels, we have WooCommerce. So you can actually set up a system where if you uh, add, let's say, WooCommerce and perhaps you want to create a coupon code and you want an email to be sent out to your users, I mean, you can set it up like that as well. I mean, this is really, really cool. So over here, if you want to select an app, you can see here we have a really long list of items. So on the action side, I know on the um, trigger side, we have quite a long list. So over here, it would be nice to see a long list as well. So here we have Deep Seek. I'd like to play around with these options, by the way, because this looks very, very interesting. Yeah, but I'd like to see more over here. I don't see... Uh, fluent CRM on this side, on the action side, because they need to be able to go in here and trigger an email sequence to be sent out. You know, that would be really cool. But perhaps I'm being too petty, but there's an option where you can request more things to be added onto the list. So you can just head over to uh, BitFlow's uh, website and suggest a request. So as you can see, this is a very, very, you know, easy to use uh, setup. I really like how simple it is to, uh, to use. At any point, you can unlink it over here or link it if you want. Oh, we also have WS form. This is crazy. This is amazing. Anyway, so on the custom apps here, this is something I hadn't mentioned. You can create your own custom apps uh, by clicking here on add new. 
Okay, uh, you can give it a description here, like that. And if you have an icon, you can select your logo here. And for the theme, let's go with that, for example, create. You can give it a name. So we're going to call this new app. You can give it a description here. And then this is where you can request or enable authentication depending on what type of uh, connection it is. So you can add your connection here, select what connection type it is. Maybe it's an API, an um, auth2, basic auth, whatever it is. Or this can be a request URL. You add your headers, your parameters. Now, this is a bit more advanced. So if you're a developer, perhaps you can, you know, pretty much check out what these, uh, what these things are. It's much easier. So here you can see we have your post, patch, delete, and so on. And we also have the type of connections over here. So you can see we have the API key and so on. But as you can see, this is full of advanced features as well. Uh, as for me, I normally mess around on the basic stuff, but the good thing is if you want to go in and create your custom, custom apps, you can literally go in and create your own app, which is similar to, uh, what we have here when we create a flow. So instead of having, let's say, um, let's say Elementor or whatever app, you now have your own, which connects data from somewhere else, connecting it to something else. Isn't that awesome? And all this is happening within this dashboard here in WordPress. So I think this is a fantastic service, fantastic tool. Go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a link to, the, um, to that in the video description below. I will definitely use it and I will definitely be making more tutorials showing you how I am actually connecting other services with my websites. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.